So behind me are two stone hinge kind of cylindrical instruments, which are collectively known as Ram Yantra. So this is a very simple instrument in the sense that it is used for measuring the horizontal coordinate. So what is a horizontal coordinate? It consists of altitude and azimuth. As we know, the altitude is the height that the sun makes in relation to the horizon, and azimuth is the angle it makes in relation to the North Pole, which is conventionally marked as zero. So as you can notice behind me, the two yantras are complementary to each other, which means the segment which is empty in one yantra is filled by the complementary segment in the other yantra. So as you can notice, two yantras behind me consist altogether of 24 segments. So the one yantra consists of 12 segments and the other yantra also consists of 12 segments. But here's the catch that one of the yantras, as you can see to my left, has broader walls than the instrument you see to my right. It is precisely because the one to my left has 18 degree segments each, you know, and the one to my right, the wall comprises of 12 degree segment each. So as we know that the earth rotates four degrees every minute, so 18 degree segment translates into 72 minutes for the yantra on my left, which is roughly, or which is exactly equal to three ghatis. And as we know, one ghati is 24 minutes, which is a Vedic unit of time division. And the one to my right, which comprises of segment of 12 degree each. And as we know, if we do the maths again, you notice that Earth, it comes down to 48 minutes, 12 degree into four minutes, and which means it's equal to two ghatis each. So what does this mean? that the stunts says in any one segment, the shadow of the center pole or the gnomon which casts the shadows on the inner cylindrical walls which is used for making the altitude and azimuth measurement, the shadow stays in the yantra to my east on the inner cylindrical walls for 72 minutes and on my right the same shadow cast by the gnomon at the center of the yantra stays on a segment for 48 minutes. So let's go ahead and <laughs> to be more precise, let's go behind <laughs> and have a closer look at the yantras and calculate the readings for ourselves. So behind me is the part A of the Ram Yantra and let's go inside and see it in action. So right now we are standing inside the part A of the Ram Yantra and as you can see here, the nomen of this yantra is casting its shadow on the inner walls of this cylindrical chamber and as we can see here the walls of this cylindrical chamber are 18 degree thick which means that there are 18 blocks on this chamber comprising of one one degree each block so let's go ahead and take the azimuth and the altitude reading of the sun so how do we take the azimuth and the altitude reading you see the markings indicated towards the left of the wall written in the Devanagari script indicates the altitude of the sun and the markings on the outer periphery of the cylindrical wall indicates the azimuth of the sun. Let's go ahead and measure the altitude and azimuth of the sun. Here we see that it's 45 degrees, we go gradually up, it's 40 degrees, it's 35 degrees, it's 30 degrees, it's 25 degrees, it's 20 degrees, then you have 19 degree, 18 degree. So, right now, if you can see here, the tip of the gnomon is halfway between 18 and 19 degrees. Which means, right now, the altitude of the sun is, as the shadow recedes, as we go, as the time progresses, as the length of the shadow decreases, right now, the altitude of the sun is 18 degree, 30 minutes. Now, in order to take the azimuth of the sun, I use the tip of the gnomon as the reference and move all the way, the center of the tip of the gnomon to be more precise as a reference and go all the way up and reach the outer circular edge of this building and I see the reading corresponding to it. So I see that one and a half blocks before it's written 280 although the number 2 is not clear which means the azimuth of the sun right now in Jaipur is 280 degrees and plus one and a half 
degrees, which stands out to 281.5 degrees. What does this mean? It means that the Earth, since the solar noon in Jaipur yesterday, has rotated about 281.5 degrees. And it still has an additional, let's say, 78.5 degree to complete its full rotation. And as the day progresses, the length of the shadow starts to decrease as the sun approaches the meridian. And not only that, the shadow being projected by the gnomon starts to shift in this direction, as you can see here, and slowly enters the void, the complementary segment of the yantra, during which we will have to go to the part B of the yantra to make, take the measurement. So now let's go all the way here. And finally, we realize that at 12 o'clock noon, the shadow will be cast here. Finally, as the Earth completes its 360 degree rotation about its axis, we would see the shadow of the gnomon being cast on this triangular slab that we see here, corresponding to the zeroth marking, azimuthal marking on this circumference of this wall. Right now, we are going to measure the altitude of the sun at solar noon during four key times of the year during the two equinoxes, that is the autumn and the vernal equinox, and during the summer and winter solstice. So as we know, the latitude of the Jaipur is 27 degrees, so which is three and a half degrees above the Tropic of Cancer belt, or the Tropic of Cancer line. So this means that the sun will never cross the zenith of the observer, to which this gnomon, as we see here, is pointing at. So, there's a difference of three and a half degrees between the latitude of the Jaipur and the latitude of Tropic of Cancer on the celestial hemisphere. So we can see that each segment, each segment of this triangular slab that we see here comprises of one degree. And since the latitude of Jaipur is three and a half degrees, so the Tropic of Cancer marking will lie three and a half degrees away from the zenith. So one, two, three and three and a half. So this corresponds to 85, 86, 86 and a half degrees. 86 and a half degrees. So what would be the altitude of the sun uh, when it crosses the meridian during the summer solstice? It would be 86 and a half degrees. So let's go ahead and further and see what happens during the equinox. So we are going down and down and down and down. Finally, we reach this point, two degrees before the 65 degree inscription in Devanagari on this triangular slab. So where is this peak pointing to? 63 degrees. What does this mean? That the altitude of the sun during the solar noon at equinox, both the equinoxes, will be 23, this will be 63 degrees. Why 63 degrees? Because at 63 degrees, when the sun crosses the equator during the equinox, the 63 degree point is exactly 27 degrees away from the latitude of the Jaipur. So during the equinox, if I were to come here and look at the shadow cast by the gnomon, I would notice that the tip of the shadow would exactly lie on the slab, the sides of the slab, as the earth completes its 360 degree rotation, indicating the solar noon, at the point when the sun exactly crosses the meridian during the equinox. Now we go ahead further and see what happens during the winter solstice which lies 23 and a half degrees below the celestial equator. Finally, we have reached 23. This slab indicates the 23rd, 23. Here we are, 24th slab. And as we know, each slab corresponds to each segment of the each segment or each 
square segment corresponds to one degree. And as we go up the slab and we have finally reached this 23 and a half segment that we see here. So what this means is that during the winter solstice, the altitude of the sun would be one and a half degrees short of this 40 degree inscription which is written here which translates to 38 and a half. So the altitude of the sun when it crosses the meridian at solar noon during the winter solstice would be 38 and a half degree. So what this means, what this means is that the length of the shadow during the solar noon would be the highest as the tip of the gnomon would be here and the length of the shadow during the solar noon at summer solstice would be the lowest as we saw earlier and the length of the shadow as oscillates between these two points as the sun goes through its Uttarayan and Dakshinayan. So we are standing in front of the part B of the Ram Yantra and as you can see the walls of the part B of the Ram Yantra are complementary to the part A of the Ram Yantra. Thus conjoined they mark a 30 degree segment. Ram Yantra part A being 18 degree segment as we saw earlier and the Ram Yantra part B being 12 degree segment as we are going to see in a short while. As the sun progresses as the earth revolves, as the earth rotates and the sun moves from east to west, the shadows alternate between these two yantra. The shadow stays on the part A of the yantra for 72 minutes and part B of the yantra for 48 minutes. So let's go inside and have a deeper look at this yantra. So right now we are in the part B of the Ram yantra and Let's see the altitude and azimuth of the sun at this point of time to see the contrast between the two yantras. And now as we can see here that the walls of this yantra comprises of squares of a degree each and there are 12 such squares that you can see as I move my laser pointer from left to right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now if you remember the walls of the part A of the Ram Yantra had 18 such squares, whereas here we have 12 such squares, indicating the fact that this Yantra measures the rotation of the earth corresponding to every 12 degrees of its rotation, whereas that measures it up to 18 degrees. And put together, like we said before, they measure alternatively between these two and add up to 30 degree of continuous measurement in a period of two hours. So let's measure the altitude and azimuth. So let's try measuring the altitude of the sun at this moment. As you can see that the pigeon is sitting right on top of the gnomon and which we can see on the shadow being projected on the wall. So I go by the tip of the gnomon and go all the way side and I measure the altitude of the sun or as we had mentioned earlier, each square slab here indicates one degree and let's go a bit below so how many degrees does this adds up to so let's go down a little so we know that this is 45 degree slab here means 45 degrees so as we go up 45 44 43 42 41 40 39 38 37 36 35, 34, 33, so as we can see we are close to 32 degrees, so which means that the altitude of the sun right now is 32 degrees and perhaps 30 minutes. In order to measure azimuth, <coughs> we use a reference point and we can see here that this line that we see here traces its way all the way up to two ninety written in Devanagari above on the circle edge of the circumference point on the circumference of the bigger cylinder and but obviously we can see that it's too tedious to measure the azimuth in that manner. 
So what do we do is we use that reference point in the triangular slab which is shown here and as we saw this was 290 degrees. So it's 291, 292 and we can see that the center of the gnomon falls, gnomon's shadow falls somewhere in between this. So it will be 291.5 degrees which will be the azimuth of the sun or in other words the degrees that are that the earth has rotated since the solar noon yesterday.